Hello! Welcome to the Voyage of the Monk, the podcast where I, uh, uh, Fawn, an Irish folklorist, explain the voyage of St. Brendan to my wonderful wife, Alice, who is an American. So, so very American. <laughs> very American. <laughs> so, uh, when we left off, there was a lot of fish. There was a lot of fish. They dealt with so many fish. There, why were there so many fish? They went back to Jason, and then there was the giant drooly fish, and then there was the even more giant fish that killed the drooly fish. Uh-huh. And then they were attacked by a griffin. <laughs> Just a purpose of nothing. And then, as they were praying... <laughs> They were surrounded by perfectly ordinary fish, and that scared the monks. That's what made them upset, was the normal fish. The other fish was just like another fucking Tuesday. <laughs> In the clear water. But, from that point of the, the clear water and the perfectly ordinary fish, we're going to jump straight into a quote. Seven days they sailed always in that clear water. And then there came a south wind and drove the ship northward, where, as they saw an island full dark and full of stench and smoke, and there they heard great blowing and blasting of bellows, but they might see nothing, but heard great thundering, whereof they were sore and afraid, and blessed themselves off. Oft. Isn't often. So yeah, they're, they're, they're sailing, they're still sailing through the clear waters. They they go north for roughly seven days, uh-huh. and they see this horrible, smelly, stinky island <laughs> that's all dark and full of smoke. Uh huh. And hear all these like blasting, bellowing noises coming from it. So a volcano. That's how a lot of people interpret it. Yes. And then a terrifying, burning figure strides across the water and just stares at them. What a power move. And and they are, they're scared. They're very scared at this. Yeah, uh uh-huh. And as they sail past, he lets out a horrifying scream. That is a power move. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Just huge fire guy just walking on water out of this smelly island. Um... Wow. So yeah, the monks are scared, but they're sailing past him, so it seems okay. But then, fiends armed with hooks and burning mallets start charging across the water from the island. They surround the boat so completely that it looks like the sea is on fire. Uh Uh-huh, okay. (laughs) What are they supposed to be? Well, it, it, the book uses the term fiend um, in the period that is kind of like used interchangeably with with demon, like lower demons. Uh huh. Okay. They just have a demon island. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the fiends start attacking the boat and the monks with their weapons. Uh huh. You know, obviously they're scared. Yeah. But the monks and the boat are protected by God. Well, thank God for that. So, <laughs> so it does nothing. Okay. Which begs the question, where was this ability when the griffin attacked? Yeah, or the giant fucking fish. What the hell, God? <laughs> so yeah, at this point, even though they, they kind of know they're safe, the monks are still kind of shitting themselves. Yeah, as you would. Because, like, this is still not a pleasant experience. Yeah, of course not. What the fuck? But eventually, the fiends, they, they, they get bored and frustrated <laughs> that they can't hurt the monks, and they leave with a sorrowful, a sorrowful cry. Aww. <laughs> Just like, seriously? Aw, sad boys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wish they could have hurt the monks? No, it's just... Aw, <laughs> sad boys. It's just a very weird situation. <laughs> so the wind blows them further north, and Brendan says that they have sailed into hell. Okay. 
As they pass burning islands, Brendan tells them to be brave because they're going to see much worse. Okay. <laughs> I don't think they all signed up for this, to be honest. <laughs> like, why Why isn't Brendan steering them somewhere else? Yeah, what the fuck, Brendan? <laughs> this, this is hell, and we're just going to stay here. They um, were supposed to be looking for paradise, right? <laughs> yep. When, when did he ever say that, oh yeah, you know, we might pass by hell. <laughs> We might, we might accidentally do that. Well, on that topic, one monk begins to freak out. As one does, yeah. So he curses his parents for not raising him better, and he jumps in the sea. Okay. <laughs> so the actual quote from the book for that is, Cursing the time that he was born, and also father and mother that begat him, because they saw no better for his protection in his young age, for now he must go to perpetual pain. Okay. <laughs> I don't think mom and dad have much to do with that. I think you just made a shit choice, but all right. He just freaked out and leaped out of the boat, like, nope, 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 nope. I what? respect it, though. I what? respect it. Why does he think that's going to be better? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people jump out the boat when they think when they hear it's going somewhere bad. Right, so, it turns out, do you, do you remember um, back in the first episode when... Probably not, I have ADHD. I think you will remember this part. Um, when they were about to set off, two more monks came up as like, can we come too? Uh-huh. And Brendan said that if you do, one of you will end up in hell. Okay. He was one of the two. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep, so he's he's just in hell now. They're not going to fish him out or anything. I feel like that's kind of burying the lead a little bit because they're like, oh, one of you will end up in hell. Bitch, all of you are in hell. <laughs> yeah, but this one has to stay there. We're all in this together. Except we're not because we're just going to abandon you in hell. Dick. <laughs> you're, you're, going, you're, you're going to have a very understandable traumatic episode and we're just going to leave you there. Brennan's not a nice guy. <laughs> He's not. Yeah, and, and and Brendan is just like, didn't I tell you, lads? I fucking did, didn't I? I fucking oh, told you. <laughs> and then anon, the wind turned into the north and drove the ship into the south, which sailed seven days continually. And they came to a great rock standing in the sea. And thereon sat a naked man in full misery and pain. For the waves of the sea had so beaten his body that all the flesh was gone. And nothing left but sinews and bare bone. Bro? <laughs> and when the waves were gone, there was a canvas that hung over his head, which had beat his body full sore with the blowing of the wind. And also there were two ox tons and a great stone he sat on, which did him full great ease. That man is dead. <laughs> no. Why is he not dead? No, he's, he's, he's fully alive. Why is he not dead, though? <laughs> <laughs> His so, skin is gone. <laughs> That's there for a reason. <laughs> Do you have any idea who this might be? No. Okay. Well, Brendan demands to know his name. And the man says that he is Judas. Judas, Judas, uh, uh, Judas, Judas. Uh. No, okay, sorry. What was that from? It's Lady Gaga. Oh, I wouldn't know that. That's fair. <laughs> okay, so Judas is having a bad fucking time, as per the fucking usual. Yes, Judas is not having a good time. So, Brendan asks where the canvas that's flapping in the wind came from. Judas says it is a cloth he bought for a leper with the money he was paid to betray Jesus. And now it beats his skin in the wind as punishment. Would you not just get rid of it? He can't. He's, Why? he's chained down. Oh. What did Judas do again? 
<laughs> I've not read the Bible. I never went to church. I never went to Bible school or anything. Basically, he was paid by the Romans okay. to um, betray Jesus. Okay. Um, they gave him 30 pieces of silver. And he led them to where Jesus and the other apostles were. And he kissed Jesus to signal which one he was. It's a little bit gay. No, here, here, okay, no, we'll get into that later. We'll get into that, that, that there, there's a thing I want to get into later. Um, so Brendan then asks about the two ox tons. Uh-huh. And Judas says he bought them with his own money to give to two priests so that they would pray for his soul. And that they help because the fish nibble the ox tons instead of Judas. Uh-huh, Okay. Are we noticing a little discrepancy there? A little problem? I don't know. Are we? So he's punished for buying the the cloth uh-huh. for the leper. Because he bought it with the, the money he was paid for betraying Jesus. Okay. Which is a, a fairly, like, charitable act. Uh-huh. It's, it's buying a sick person a blanket. Yeah. huh uh, yeah, fair enough. It's it's like blood money, but it's still like a blanket for a sick person. Uh huh. Whereas he is rewarded for buying the two ox tons, basically to bribe some priests to pray for him. It's it's not a good discrepancy. It's it's giving a little bit. Oh, well, if it's for the priests, it's fine. But for the leper, fuck that guy. Yeah, it's it's because it's his own money that this is a good act. And, like, I can, I can, I can kind of see, like, the, the whole blood money aspect to it. But it's still, like, the charitable act he's getting punished for, but the act motivated entirely by his own self-interest, he's getting rewarded for. Uh-huh. Which I'm, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Some mixed messaging there. But he goes on to explain that the stone he's sitting on was one that when he was alive, he had moved from a wasteland to a roadside so travellers could rest on it. And so it's a place, so now it's a place for him to rest because every good deed will be rewarded and every bad deed punished. Okay. But like, I think betraying Jesus... The fact that he's in hell is already a punishment. Yeah. So giving the blanket to the leper should be something that's rewarded. So did, does it ever go into why Judas betrayed Jesus? Do we have a, a, enough time for that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go into it. <laughs> we'll go into it. Um, the Judas says that really he should be tortured at all times alongside Herod and Pontius Pilate. Um, Herod was the local king who who was the one, like, bring, putting Jesus on trial, essentially. And Pontius Pilate was a Roman senator, a Roman official, anyway, okay, um, yeah. nearby who is supposed to intervene in these things and washed his hands of it. But instead, he gets to sit on this stone on holidays and weekends... Because God is merciful. Instead of being tortured in hell. Uh-huh. It's so like being actively tortured by demons. Okay. So this is this is the mercy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, okay, okay. So for listeners, for listeners. When I was growing up. And I was taught the whole thing about Jesus and Judas and all of this stuff. What I was taught was that Jesus knew the entire time that he was going to be crucified. Like, it was the plan. And that, like, he and the apostles had intentionally made a plan that one of them was going to, like, scare quotes, betray him. So that this would happen. Because that was the plan. It was like he was supposed to die for everyone's sins. 
So they had planned it out and that Judas was the one Jesus trusted to actually do the job. That's what I learned growing up. Did anyone else learn that? I don't know. It kind of just feels like Judas is getting kind of the shit out of the stick. Yeah, because cause like in every everything I've seen since I was a child, Judas is portrayed as this like schemer who 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 genuinely betrayed Jesus and who was like working against Jesus. But what I was taught in school was that like this was all Jesus's secret fucking double bluff plan and that Judas was just performing the role he was assigned. Wow. Um, I kind of like that one more. I think that, that like, because there's the whole thing with him spending the 40 days in the desert because, like, ah, do I want to go ahead with this? Do I want to be fucking crucified? (laughs) All this stuff. And, like, it makes more sense if, like, he knows this is all happening and he's like, okay. The way I picture it is, like, the Last Supper is that scene in a heist movie where they plan out the whole thing. <laughs> that's that's the way I picture it. And like the 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 the, the goal of the heist is is everyone's souls. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's that's just how I picture it. And for me, like, the way I was taught in school is that Judas was like the linchpin. He was he was the one that made it happen and that that was always the plan. And Judas was fully aware that Jesus wanted him to do it and Jesus was fully aware that Judas was going to do it because Jesus told him to do it. Did anyone else learn it that way? <laughs> just a lot of inconsistencies in the Bible. Well, like, that might just be how I was taught. Like, because we, we didn't get a choice in being taught about this shit. Oh, well, yeah, no, of course. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, anyway. Judas specifies... That was a bit of a tangent. Judas specifies to Brendan that it's Sunday. So the demons will be coming for him that evening. Oh. And he begs Brendan to protect him. Okay. So, Brendan agrees... And they they just hang around by this rock Uh in his boat. Uh Um, And the demons arrive. And when Brendan's like, no, you cannot take this man. He will remain here with me. The demons are like, no, fucking stop. We we just, we have a job. We have been hired. Uh We need to bring this man in. And if we don't, we're in shite. Uh-huh. Do you know what'll happen to us if we don't torture him? The demons don't have a union. We do not have a union. <laughs> the demons do not have a union. Like, listen, we... Listen, listen, listen. I know, I know a bunch of you think that, like, the fella downstairs, that he's a, an, an independent, like, an independent guy. No, he works for your man. He works for the fella upstairs. Right? He will not recognize our union. <laughs> he refuses. We have no rights. Do you have any idea what will happen to us if we're not torturing this fella all night? Unionize hell. <laughs> so. <laughs> Brendan says. I let not you do your master's commandment. But by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, I charge you to leave him the night till tomorrow. The demons, they insist, but Brendan says, well, the demons insist, but Brendan charged the fiends by his passion that they should not annoy him that night. And then the fiends went their way, roaring and crying toward hell to their master, the great devil. Annoy is... (laughs) An interesting choice of words for a man who's about to be tortured. Well, I th- I think they I think it means like don't annoy me. Oh, okay. <laughs> An 
interesting choice of words for someone, you know, who's trying to defend a man from being tortured, but all right. Lads, would you ever fuck off? <laughs> so, Judas then thanked St. Brendan and gave him a look. Sorry. And then Judas thanked Bre- And then Judas thanked St. Brendan so ruefully it was a pity to see. He is a wreck of a human being. Uh-huh. And he is so ridiculously, pitiably grateful to Brendan for doing this for him. Uh-huh. But then... Because remember what Brendan said? That they were in hell? Um, I charge you to leave him the night till tomorrow. Okay. So the next morning, the demons show up. And they say, listen, listen. We, get, we went back. We went back without this fucker last night. And they tore us to fucking shreds. They fucking destroyed us. So now, we're taking him back again. And we're going to torture him twice as bad as we usually do. So they grab Judas. And they take him away. Uh-huh. While Brendan and his monks watch. Bye. Have fun. Play safe. Because Brendan just said, yeah, for tonight. Just for tonight. Brendan, that was fucking useless. <laughs> you have put him in a worse scenario now. Brendan, that was, that was useless. <laughs> You're useless. Um, and it's like... <coughs> it feels less like an act of kindness... Than it does... Because even in the way he was phrasing things... Don't annoy me. Basically. It's more like an act of ego. Yeah, it feels like an act of self-aggrandizement. Not an act of, of charity, of, of kindness, of, of comfort, even. It's very like... Sailor Moon with, with your top hat man. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, my work here is done! <laughs> And everybody's like, but you didn't really do anything. <laughs> and and then he just goes, whoosh. <laughs> and he leaves. Yes. Except he actually made the scenario worse. <laughs> like, he wasn't, he wasn't like... Because when, when I got to this the first time I was reading this, I thought he was going to take Judas with him. Uh-huh. Yeah. That seems like the logical course of action there. And, and like, put him in some kind of limbo or something where he w- at least wouldn't be constantly tortured. And, like, they get some shit for it, but, like, they did it from the goodness of their hearts and, you know... Yeah. And, and seeing someone suffering for eternity. Yeah, that this was going to be some kind of way of redeeming Judas or, yeah. or rescuing him. Or, you know, time served. But no! <laughs> no! It's just... Oh! <laughs> Job done! <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Have fun, Judas. It was nice to meet you. <laughs> it's such, like, it feels like Judas is just there. And, like, let, let's be honest. This is why Judas is there. Judas is just there so Judas can be there. Yeah. And so you can see him being punished. Yeah, and I feel like that's how it is for a lot of this. Like, things that are happening are just happening for the sake of happening. Yeah, Nothing yeah. Nothing means anything. Well, no, they do mean things. Like, like Judas, Judas being there is so you can see the, the wrath of God, but also the mercy of God in that he gets to enjoy lesser torture sometimes. <laughs> um... What about the fish or the griffin? What do they mean? Well, they're they they. Well, which fish? Yes. The the good the, the 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 perfectly ordinary fish or the giant fish. That's that's what I mean. Like <laughs> these things just keep happening, and it doesn't feel like there's any like metaphor or meaning to them. They just happen, and then they're gone. Well, it, it there there is because the griffin attacks. And they pray to God, and then God sends something to save them. Okay, but we've done this like five times. Yeah, it's emphasizing the point, but it is all the one meaning. Brendan is, is a shit storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking sucks at it. <laughs> it is the meaning of trusting in God. 
and and going to God for help and supplication. And like even when the tiny fish arrive, the perfectly ordinary fish, it's it's no, you, you keep praying, don't worry about it. God God is gonna look after us. <laughs> and that's why Brendan isn't diverting them from hell. No, it's fine. It's grand. God will look after us. Brendan, you're fucking useless. <laughs> well, that that's what his use is. It's it's no, it's grand. God will God will sort it. God will sort it out. Okay. <laughs> Just let God handle it, and that's what the monastery, the the boring monastery, was for as well. Um, because yeah, these the, those monks, they're so completely given over to pure faith in God providing that nothing fucking happens there. In God we trust. <laughs> um, nothing fucking happens there because nothing needs to happen because God is providing everything. Would that not be its own form of torture, though? I That's what I would think. Um, <laughs> like, honestly, I have never really seen, like, representations of heaven of of god providing and and god like protecting and guarding that don't sound fucking awful like like in the good place mm-hmm. we're actually sucked yeah I mean, it wasn't actually the good place mm-hmm. but like still it fucking sucked they were all bored to tears yeah like it just sounds like having nothing to do yeah forever yeah I have never heard of a representation of heaven that didn't sound boring as fuck. I would rather not exist. This is going to get a little like <laughs> Like, at least in hell, things probably change. Yeah, where's the drama? Where's the tea? <laughs> Where's where's the hot goss? <laughs> I would I would rather be tortured, like intentionally physically tortured, than just sit through the exact same fucking day forever. <coughs> <sighs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> the, the <laughs> This total abandonment of Judas, this, like, entirely self-serving act of charity. That isn't really an act of charity. Like, what did you actually do to help this man? Nothing. Not a damn Nothing. thing. Nothing. You made the situation worse. Not a damn thing. Made the situation worse. And, like, don't even acknowledge that it's worse. Don't, there's, there's no... No, you can't. You you must you must like stick to your normal stuff. You can't torture him worse. There's no prote- continuing to protect him. It it's all like, oh, you have given me an opportunity to show how cool I am. Uh-huh. And now that that's over with, I'm going to leave. Brendan needs to get his ass beat. Like He needs to get his ass beat. <laughs> and Judas should be the one to do it. <laughs> Fucker. Oh, you're going to hate the conversation that happens in the next one. Probably. You're, you're really going to hate it. I hate most of this, honestly. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like a series of events that are happening over and over and over again that are teaching you to not work for anything. Just let God handle it. Mm-hmm. And then you just keep getting put in these weird fucking situations again. It's the forced helplessness we were talking about. Yeah. And, like, I hate it. Yeah. 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 I think that's us for this month. Uh-huh. So we'll be back again next month. Same monk time, same monk channel. <laughs>